Hey everybody, this is RJ Shea and I'm in Kirkwood, Missouri tonight at the Ober Anderson Gallery and I have our guest presenter tonight, Jody Williams, who uh, did a fantastic presentation. Uh, Jody is the president of the ASBA, do I get that right? Yes. Uh, American Society of Botanical Artists. And this was an education and a very interesting one for all of us tonight because Jody knows probably more about botanical art than anybody I've ever spoken to and let everybody know with her presentation tonight just how incredible uh, this field is. Uh, we're also here speaking about the upcoming gallery presentation that's going to be here on starting on June 3rd uh, at the Ober Anderson Gallery of a Nash, uh, international um, art show, yes? Yes, exhibition of botanical artwork from artists who are members of the American Society of Botanical Artists. Now, this is an internet, you're the president, and you're right here in St. Louis, and this is an international society. How many countries are involved and people involved in this? Well, ASBA has over 1,400 members from over 25 countries. We have a number of chapters throughout the United States and other local, more informal groups that get together to do botanical art, put on exhibitions, uh, give classes, and just uh, have the camaraderie of other artists with a similar interest. Now, you're a botanical artist yourself. You're a photographer, but your background is in engineering. Is that right? How did you get into this? Well... That's an interesting question, and I, I don't know that I remember exactly, other than my parents and grandparents came from North Iowa. They grew up on farms, and I remember every trip to grandmother's house started with a tour of the flowers that were blooming around the house and uh, vegetables that were ready to be picked in the garden. So I've always been around plants and always been interested in learning the names of plants and identifying uh, the different characteristics of them and find them just beautiful subjects that uh, offer so much for artists. And what is your vision for the organization here in St. Louis that you're trying to achieve? Well, we really like to get an active local group uh, going. We, are, we have a good start. We started in October with about six and we've grown to maybe a dozen. We get together uh, once a month at the Foundry Arts Center in, uh, I have studio space there where we can chat, we can do demonstrations, we can sketch, draw, paint, uh, and just look at art together. And then about once a month, we schedule, or once a quarter, we schedule a field trip. We've been to Bell Fountain Cemetery to see the beautiful trees there in fall color and again this spring uh, in their flowering form. And then we took a wonderful tour of the Rare Book Room Herbarium and Library at the Missouri Botanical Garden with uh, their library director, Doug Holland, who showed us uh, original artwork by Margaret Mee, who's a notable historic botanical artist, as well as uh, wonderful old books and publications and uh, it was really quite a treat to to do that as a group so we would we would like to bring together people that have an interest in plants and art and if you already know how to draw or paint that's great but if you don't uh, we'll help you learn and we just are look at looking for people that are enthusiastic about uh, plants and art now you do uh, you're a teacher and you also do um uh, different teaching seminars at your at your studio at the Foundry in St. Charles, right? Yes, I offer a number of different formats of classes. They're all specific to botanical art, drawing and watercolor painting predominantly. And we do a one-day Saturday workshop that's an introduction where I provide all the materials so people don't have to invest in a lot of specialty items and can come and try out uh, the genre, try drawing from a, a live plant specimen and learning some basic watercolor techniques. Uh, I also do a more intensive three-day introduction uh, workshop as well as offer six-week uh, sessions once a week for three hours. That sounds fantastic. And of course, St. Louis, you were mentioning, is an epicenter for botanicals in a lot of different ways because of the uh, Danforth uh, Center, right, and the, the Botanical Garden, which is worldwide known for its, its excellence in, in what it does, right? 
Yes, the uh, Missouri Botanical Garden, I would consider it probably in the top three botanical gardens in the world, both as a research uh, facility and as a, a public garden. And then the Danforth Plant Science Center, Washington University, a uh, number of, uh, of commercial enterprises. At one time, uh, research had shown that St. Louis had the largest number of PhD plant scientists per capita of any place in the country. Unbelievable. And uh, so what kind of people come to be your students? Are they, do you have young people, old people, middle-aged people? Who's interested in doing this? Because as I was looking at what you're doing, you know, I'm an, I'm an illustrator by trade, and I've done a bunch of botanical stuff, but when you start talking about how perfect and how accurate it has to be scientifically, I thought, man, I'm going to have to do a lot of research here uh, to do my subject because you just can't whip something out. If it's not right, it's not right. Well, this, the students are varied in ages, uh, both male and female. I teach adults, and because it does take a, a, a bit of discipline and, and a, a attention span that's longer than a, a, perhaps a grade schooler, although we introduce uh, young kids through simple subjects like you know fruits and vegetables and things like that that they can relate to, but I uh, focus mostly on adults and they come from all walks of life that's one of the most interesting things about our organization is that because there's not a university major in botanical art our members come from a variety of backgrounds so some come from textile design or graphic design some come from the fine arts others come from like myself engineering or it seems like people that come from uh, technical fields usually have the disposition for this genre because it's so detail oriented um, it just seems like that type of personality uh, takes to this art form but we also find that by by virtue of the intense observation that it takes to represent a subject accurately it becomes a very meditative and contemplative and relaxing uh, activity that really helps you slow down and uh, one of my favorite books is Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards right. and in the uh, introduction to her book she talks about the shift from left brain thinking to right brain thinking and uh, left brain being language and, and analytical uh, processing and the right brain being associated more with creativity and that it really takes about 20 minutes for your brain to shift from left brain thinking to right brain thinking. And so many of us, if we're just working on our art for 10 or 15 minutes at a time, we never get, we never allow that shift to happen. But once we do, it takes us to a completely different place where we lose the sense of time passing and you really, it's a, it's a very relaxing, uh, so although it, it's demanding, uh, in its detail, it's also very relaxing and therapeutic uh, endeavor as well. That was going to be my word, therapeutic, because all forms of art, when you enjoy the the activity in the pastime and you get involved, hours pass, you look and you think, I've been here for six hours, where'd the time go? But yes, so listen, where can people find out more about this this organization and about you and your classes? Well, you can find out more about botanical art and the American Society of Botanical Artists at our website, which is www.asba-art.org. A wealth of information and beautiful artwork, uh, information about joining as a member. Anyone who has an interest and an appreciation for contemporary botanical art is welcome to join our organization. And then... For those that are local to St. Louis or visiting St. Louis and would like to participate in a class or come visit the studio, uh, I'm in Studios 2 and 3 at the Foundry Arts Center in historic old St. Charles on the north end of Main Street along the Missouri River. Beautiful facility with formal gallery space and, and traveling and uh, 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 periodic ex ex exhibitions along with about 20 individual artist studios. Uh, so we welcome you there to, to look and to learn.
I can't thank you enough for coming tonight, and it was really interesting, very interesting. And, uh, you know, a new wrinkle for us here at the St. Louis Artist Guild at the illustration section, we've all done botanicals, but after I've seen some of the things that, that Jody has shown us, I need to do a little bit more observing closely <laughs> when I'm doing my subject matter. Don't forget to come by and see the show, this new show which is gonna be here starting June the 3rd through the 30th, the Ober Anderson Gallery in Kirkwood. It's right next to the uh, train station in Kirkwood, at, right at the corner of uh, East Argon and Kirkwood Road. So thanks, Jody, for coming tonight. And this is RJ signing off at the OA Gallery. We'll see you in June. See ya. <laughs>